Ma'am, you want to check your audio and video? Ah, uh, yes, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. You're audible. My video is clear. Yes, ma'am. Yes, it's clear. Okay. I'll just try sharing my screen, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Is my screen visible now? It's visible, ma'am. It's visible. Okay, fine. I'll stay muted. Huh? When you're ready to begin, you can please tell me. I'll join. I'll be here only. Yeah, ma'am. Yeah, sure. Okay, thank you. Sri Devi, are you able to hear me? Yes, ma'am. 
Sumati? Yes, ma'am. I have only 13 joined so far. Yes, ma'am. 10 minutes more, ma'am. So let us wait for two minutes. Resource person, has she joined? Yes, ma'am. She has joined.
திவ்யா பாத்தீங்களா Good afternoon, ma'am. Shall we start, ma'am? Yes, Sri Devi. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, uh, participants. Good afternoon. Uh, we are here in the fifth day of uh, the workshop. And uh, we, are, we have here Dr. Uh, Sri Vidya, ma'am, uh, as a resource person here. Um, Thank you. ஒருமா <laughs> 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 ahead of the department um, to welcome the gathering uh, sumati uh, sumati will you please mute the participants yes ma'am uh, some of them are in unmute mode uh, yes ma'am mute and uh, resource person to continue if uh, yeah okay thank you okay, so, uh, Uh, good afternoon uh, to everyone present in this uh, wonderful uh, i think very very useful five day uh, national workshop the day five of the uh, five day national workshop we have had uh, the previous four days we have had uh, very very resourceful resource persons who have shared with us wonderful insights into every domain they chose whether it is literature or whether it is language or whether it is research or psychology we have seen how they were able to deliberate 
and uh, give a lot of takeaways for the participants. Uh, so today we are on day five and uh, we have with us an uh, experienced teacher and a seasoned academician, Dr. Sri Vidya from AMJN College, the Department of English. So she is here to tell you, I think, uh, probably one of the <coughs> topics because today every uh, institution is focusing on research. Earlier, it was a lot on academic, but now academics cannot just be the mainstay. We have to combine it with research. And every faculty is expected, yes, whether they are junior or senior or whatever grade they may be in, it is expected that they have a very good research record with them. So for that, you know, there is a lot of, uh, I mean, clamor for what journals can I choose? How do I do my research? How can I uh, go ahead and, you know, really make a mark in the field of research? So how, to, how do I look for journals? There are so many questions in the minds of young research scholars, uh, regular researchers, and even experienced teachers. Because research is, I think, off late picking up, you know, a lot of significance and importance. So now, uh, Dr. Sri Vidya is here to share with us. Uh, the topic itself, you know, uh, sounds very pleasant because this is what we are very looking for, embarking on a research trip. So she is uh, going to make it sound like, you know, a, maybe a smooth journey that we won't feel the pain of doing research in future. So she, I would like to thank her on behalf of our department and I, I also want to extend a very, very hearty welcome to Dr. Sri Vidya uh, because uh, all our time is precious. She is here to share her wonderful knowledge and her wonderful ideas and thoughts with us. So uh, thanks a lot, ma'am, and hearty welcome to the day fifth of uh, the five-day national workshop. Uh, I would also like to welcome the participants. I think... Uh, without the participants, this workshop would not have been as successful as it is today. So uh, we are very, very thankful to them. Some of them have stood with us uh, for all the five days. They have shown interest. They have interacted. They've given a very good feedback. And all this is motivation for us to take things further. So I would like to thank and welcome all the participants from the various uh, colleges. And also, as I always do place my record of appreciation to the conveners, the co-conveners, my faculty members, who have all worked together to make this day possible. So uh, thank you, everyone, and hearty welcome. Over to you. Sunil. Thank you, ma'am. Um, thank you for the welcome address, ma'am. Um, and to note this, uh, we have uh, 593 uh, participants registered for this workshop, for five-day workshop. And uh, many of us, more than uh, 250 are joining every day. And uh, more than 150 to 100, they are joining on YouTube Live. And today also we have this YouTube Live streaming and the links are posted in the uh, um, groups and uh, now I may call upon Dr. Uh, Sangeeta Priya ma'am, Assistant Professor, Department of English, SRM ISD to give a brief introduction uh, for a resource person for the day. Yeah, thank, you, ma thank you ma'am. Thank you ma'am. It's a wonderful afternoon. Uh, people of uh, the same feather know they have joined here and we have with us a person who is having education in her name itself. Uh, I welcome you, Dr. C. D. V. ma'am, primarily. See, see uh, I am just calling yourself as a Sri Vidya ma'am. The reason is that Vidya means education. So, Dr. C. Vidya ma'am, like from your name itself, uh, we could come to the conclusion that you are there no, as a mentor, you were a mentor and you are going to be a wonderful mentor in the future generation too. Ma'am, the objective like you have mentioned in your uh, like profile is determination. 
yes ma'am your uh, profile says that you have achieved a lot and you ma'am is hard working and she is having the ability to organize things to motivate people and she had been there almost like with students uh, from uh, uh, maybe for a period of uh, more than 10 years and she had uh, been a trainer she had been a teacher she had been an assistant professor and she had been a mentor and she had participated in uh, so many uh, co curricular and co curricular activities uh, to talk about few of her achievements she had been a certified uh, trainer uh, by central institute of english and foreign languages in the year 2000 and she had been a convener of literary association and organized and conducted inter school competition uh, in august uh, 2014 and she had been a convener of uh, an english uh, uh, group to she uh, she had conducted various competitions Uh, for the students of literary association and she had been uh, there no in numerous clubs too she presented a paper on uh, translation studies at a state level seminar in 2001 she conducted a seminar for the member of youth red cross on the importance of blood and organ donation and uh, she had uh, like uh, organized so many state level orientation program for the youth red cross at kotegri uh, to talk about her experience she started her uh, like work as an assistant professor in the year 2016 from a reputed uh, like college in chennai known as sajain college and uh, she had been part of uh, the esteemed institution that is our institution of excellence known as srm group of institution she worked in ishwari srm as a lecturer and uh, like uh, no like from 2018 to 2016 see you imagine now how it was continuously like she had been there no in the field of education see i am just mentioning then and there like uh, one or uh, two important things about her but the list goes on actually right and she had handled communicative english professional english soft skills and uh, she had been there no like uh, as a trainer uh, for uh, college students too to talk about her seminars and paper presentation she published numerous papers in ugc listed uh, journals and ugc care journals too and she had attended a two day national level workshop and presented uh, papers on humor in the classroom in a two day international seminar organized by anna university see all her paper presentation like it is there no in a reputed institutions alone and uh, she had been there no as an organizer as a presenter as a researcher and every day learner uh, ma'am it's very happy to see you and welcome you uh, to our group once again this is uh, this uh, group is not new to you but still the learners are new and we are happy to be there with you ma'am uh, welcome ma'am thank you ma'am for the detailed uh, introduction to the resource person and and now uh, i now i may invite uh, dr s shrividya ma'am assistant professor am jain college chennai uh, to give uh, a bountiful uh, lecture on embarking on a research trip especially the embarking the word actually uh, is a very catchy word uh, which uh, actually starts uh, which makes me think a lot about uh, uh, what she is going to speak on today and uh, i invite you ma'am over to you ma'am Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, very good afternoon and a very warm. Uh, uh, you've given me a very warm welcome today. I'm. Uh, I don't know. I have lost my words. Uh, I came with so much of preparation, 
uh, every meeting or every uh, seminar that we attend, every paper presentation we do, every class that we go, I think all of us as teachers, we go with a lot of preparation. Uh, today also have come with a lot of preparation and uh, uh, all your humble words, uh, Dr. Rama, um, uh, I'm sorry, I don't remember the name of uh, uh, the teacher who introduced to me very humbly and very magnanimously, I should say, she introduced to me. Uh, Ma'am, I don't know if I can stand uh, uh, on par with your uh, humbleness. Uh, I'm deeply humbled by your uh, kind introduction. I'm, uh, I feel uh, I'm given uh, the feeling of homecoming again. Uh, as you rightly said, uh, SRM is not new to me because I've worked uh, in two of its institutions, one at SRM, one of the institutions at Katangulatur, and the other one is at uh, SRM uh, Ishwari Engineering College. So SRM, I understand, just like what uh, uh, Sandal sir was saying yesterday, it's another homecoming, but every day is a new learning, as she rightly said, every day is a new learning. I am a learner. And at this point, I think I should say, um, I shouldn't keep it to myself. So I thought, okay, given an opportunity, I should also tell some of the uh, elements with which at least some of them will be able to um, catch it like snippets and take it around so that they can finish up their research. Uh, why I chose this as my topic, I was given the freedom to choose my topic. Uh, I was pondering over a lot of areas, whether I should do on literature, whether I should do on ELT or something. Um, we have our comfort zones, right? But uh, I, I really wanted to do something that will be of use. Uh, I'm, I'm not trying to offend anybody by saying literature is of no use at all. It is, of course, necessary. Uh, it has so much of moral values. Um, I have myself done on literature only, but I really felt this pandemic has pushed us to a, a place that we don't find ourselves getting out. Uh, we don't seem to be finishing off the work that we have started. So there has always been a hitch. There has always been a hurdle. So how do we come out of it? That is why I thought uh, uh, this will be, uh, you know, at least if I'm able to provide some sort of an inspiration or if I can change at least one person or motivate at least one person to say, yes, I don't think uh, it is too late. It is not bad. It's all right to fall. It is all right to fall short. Uh, but still, I'm, I, I keep running, right? So that is what I, I really wanted to give as a motivation. Mm, I'll take you through my presentation today. Uh, this presentation, why I have titled it so, is because uh, we embark on a journey with a lot of expectations, with a lot of, uh, uh, not just expectations, a lot of memories also we collect. From the moment we start packing our bags, we always have a lot of expectations, right? Uh, we happily pack our bags. But when we start research, it isn't so. We always have fear. There are so many butterflies in our stomach and we literally know the meaning of having butterflies in our stomach when we start a research. So uh, it is not actually a nightmare. It is not actually very uh, hard. It is not very difficult as long as we stay uh, systematized. So uh, I think I'll take you through this uh, presentation. Mm. I'll share my screen and kindly tell me if uh, my screen is visible. Ma'am, is it visible? Yes, it's visible. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma it's visible, ma'am. Thank you. Screen is visible, ma'am. Yeah, I hope it is a full screen now. My internet shows a little unstable. Ma'am, screen is visible, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. Um, this uh, embarking on a research trip, uh, there's so much of happiness in that uh, person's face. Uh, but I do not know if all of us have continued to hold that same happiness until the end of the research. Uh, at least some of us have tried to do so. And towards the end, we really feel, uh, you know, a completed feeling. It is a very satiating feeling when we complete our uh, thesis and we submit it. The day that we uh, finish our thesis and we submit it is a celebration that we do. Mm, thanks to God for uh, helping all of us complete. Uh, let me tell you, uh, I don't want to put this as a disclaimer and all. But let me tell you, this uh, presentation would benefit more to young researchers 
or uh, for people who feel le a little less motivated, there aren't uh, much problems that we have faced more than this pandemic that we have seen. Uh, moving on to the presentation. See, this is what I have uh, tried to tell you all, uh, how we plan a trip, uh, what a research proposal can be, uh, how we choose a transport, itinerary that is involved, uh, that we always carry, boarding, travel writing, chapterization, abstract and synopsis, and bibliography. A few of those very important elements here and there I've chosen to put it together into this presentation. Okay, we all know that research is a systematic process of collecting and analyzing information. See, uh, we've always had uh, research to be, people have uh, told us, it is a systematic process, you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to collect information, you must go to this library, you must go to that library. All these loads of information come into our head and before we start researching, there is always a fear that's there in our head. It crowns our head, just like that corona. And it stays in our head until we finish the whole uh, process itself. But what are we trying to do? We are only trying to understand the whole world itself around us. Somebody has written certain books. Let it be the authors or the poets or whoever we are choosing. They've already written a lot. We are trying to understand in their eyes. Through their eyes, we are trying to understand whatever is running around us. And in that understanding, we are trying to generalize a few statements, if that is true. And we try to pick and choose a certain area to be studied in particular. That is exactly what we do in literature. That is why it is exactly called as a systematic process of collecting information and in general, the phenomenon under study in particular. So we, we sometimes choose feminism alone or uh, whichever wave of feminism we choose, or it can be on eco-criticism or eco-feminism or whatever we would want to do on. Uh, what is research? Uh, this, uh, I think uh, all of us would agree. It is a search again. We are trying to research. It is only a research for something new. We always have inquisitiveness. Somebody tells us half information and they go, we will not be able to stay with that. So this is what research actually means. We are trying to search for new reasons or some inquisitiveness is there. We can't stop our uh, uh, search for that. We, we will not be able to put a stop at that one particular point and we would want to continue. It's like watching a movie that is so thrilling. It, it is, you know, the moment is so gripping and we, we will be sitting at the edge of the uh, chairs, right? So similarly, this research or any research for that matter should be like that. And how do we go about that is what the whole thing is about. Uh, we sometimes have a personal reason or we have a passion towards a field of study. See, some of us might be good at music. Some of us might be good in Indian literature. Uh, just because I love the South Indian uh, culture or let's say the North Indian culture, I would want to do a research on uh, literature itself, uh, Indian literature or South Indian literature, or maybe I have um, a liking towards Mahabharata or uh, Ramayana or the Bible or the stories in Bible. Uh, there are so many things that can uh, attract us. So if I choose that, that is my inquisitiveness. Follow that, I can very well search for those through the net. And how am I going to do that? It is only through systematically investigating. How do I get to systematically investigate? We need to have a list of items of what, what and all are we going to do. So for that, initially, I remember my guy, people use the net. Now you have information available. We need to cut it short. We need to cut, uh, cut and shortlist the uh, number of information that's available to us uh, but it wasn't so so searching through internet tools has become very handy now how do we uh, choose our favorite destination see whenever we plan a trip we are so happily packing our bags okay now when we pack our bags we're so happy we've already decided on this particular destination let's say if it's Kodak and all or Hyderabad or Delhi or whichever place we choose there might be people who wouldn't want to go there there might be a lot of people who would want to go there so we have a lot of uh, do's and don'ts also. No, I don't want this place. I don't want that place. Now, finally, we come to a conclusion that I have chosen this place. And to reach there, what and all is necessary. To reach there and stay comfortably, what and all things should be done. So if I'm uh, going to start a research trip, how am I going to plan the trip? See, remember, it is not a one-day trip. It is not a one-month trip. It is a long process. It is definitely going to take us about two years, sometimes three years, or even five years and more. So... The thesis or my research is going to travel along with me day and night, sometimes even through my sleep. 
So how much should I plan? So every day there is planning. Every day there is a learning. I learn from a lot of others also. I learn a lot of information from the others also. So if I have learned how to choose my own interest of uh, interesting area, let's say I'm going to choose novel. What sort of a novel am I going to choose? Now, if I'm going to choose drama, what sort of a drama or poetry I'm going to choose? Now, what am I supposed to do? So let's say if I'm going to choose um, a, a place to visit, or let's say if it is Kodaikanal, or let's say it's Kerala. In some areas, you know, in Kerala, it is not easy to, this will be uh, closed. Uh, some of the hotels will not function. Um, some of the uh, auto drivers wouldn't come. So uh, there are so many other problems that we'll have to check also. So if we reach there at that particular time, how are we going to reach the hotel? How are we going to go and enjoy a family trip? So all this matters. Similarly, if I'm going to choose a novel, if I'm going to choose a drama or a poetry, how am I going to read that novel? How much of interest should I have in this particular writer? Or is there any character that I can relate to? Okay. Now, if it is poetry, how much should I read um, along with the poet? If there are certain uh, embedded meanings, if I, I can say, uh, if there are uh, lines that need to be deeply understood, how much should I go into it? Can I go about detailing every word that the poet has written or should I read between the lines or just give a surface meaning? So much is there to be understood. Now, if I have done that, a groundwork is done. So the writer, the poet or the dramatist, all these people, their culture, on what basis have they written? If I have given a rough study, if I have done a rough study of all of that, I think the groundwork is done. Now the groundwork is done, I can start with my pilot study. What is a pilot study? A pilot study is nothing but for me. Now, before we start on a journey, we see how much budget we have, right? If it's going to cost me about 1 lakh rupees or let's say about 50,000 rupees, and if I have only 30,000 rupees, then I have to cut short on my other expenses. So I'll have to cut down on the kind of luxury expenses or sometimes maybe on my shopping expenses. So how am I going to do that? So a pilot study will help us understand whether this line is feasible for me. If I have an area that can be chosen between two, if I say novel and poetry, if I say I'm, I prefer novel to poetry because this seems to be more feasible for me. I've done a pilot study on that. And if uh, it is the same with ELT also. So if I'm going to go by theory, is that going to be of help to me? So with that pilot study, it is going to be of definite use to us. It will help us to understand whether we are able to, uh, we will be able to reach the destination properly. Now the research proposal, a research proposal, I have given you an example of that. I will explain it to you with that and that abstract also follows. Now, these are some of the genres that I have just mentioned. There are more that we can choose in, within poetry uh, or within drama or within novel itself. So many things can be chosen. I'll, I'll show you all that. Yeah, a research proposal. What is a research proposal? Uh, I wonder if uh, many of the universities are still asking for research proposal, uh, but this is what actually a research proposal means. I would say this goes into everybody's thesis, everybody who has written a research, everyone who has written a research paper would have done all this. Maybe unconsciously we've done all this. Mm. We might not have, we're not going to define it, uh, or, you know, uh, right away, but still all this is included in the pieces itself. What is the uniqueness? Who is involved or what is being investigated? Who is involved? See, if I'm going to choose, um, you know, women in extremist countries, okay? Who is going to be involved? The women are going to be involved. Why is it being chosen for me? And why is it being investigated is what the question is about. Why this particular topic? See, I might have a liking towards one particular writer because uh, let's say if it is uh, going to be R.K. Narayan, Okay, it's very easy to be understood. He is very easy to be understood. I am able to understand uh, because he is easily relatable or the culture that he talks about in that novel or any novel for that matter. I am able to understand easily because I'm also a South Indian. So if I have such a reason like that, then why not choose that? So I'm able to justify this reason. So anybody who would go through a DC meeting, a doctoral committee meeting, 
will have all these questions at one or the other to have answered. So all this groundwork and this research proposal is made ready in the mind itself. Young research scholars uh, who are yet to begin research, I think this will be a, a great help for you guys. How are you going to research the practicality? Um, the same example uh, that I uh, had mentioned, extremist countries. Imagine I will not be able to get into Pakistan or Afghanistan or Iran or uh, even Dubai to do a field work. If I'm going to say, see, come on, I want to do this. They're not going to relax the rules for me. Me as a woman going and visiting Afghanistan and Pakistan, I would turn into, um, you know, turn into a family. I, I wouldn't even know. I, I would be caught up there. I will not be able to finish up my research and come back. So there are practical for me. So whether it is possible for me to do a field work, that is a big question. Questionnaire or public views, or maybe with some interviews. YouTube is helping us a lot some of the other interviews, all this put together, this research proposal will help you identify where you stand and how you should travel in your research. This is a research proposal, just the introduction, the first few lines alone I have given, a comparative study of what educated and uneducated will, this is uh, the introduction a few lines that I could write, uh, you know, uh, suddenly when I thought I, I will just give you uh, a small shot of what a research proposal would be. Uh, this is how you can actually introduce women in extremist countries are prohibited from getting education. The lawmakers prevent them from being socially involved in activities that can lead to mutual growth. Whereas there are women who are educated and have begun to voice for those unfortunate women who are doomed to remain in their houses. Uh, we all know about Malala Yousafzai and some of the other women activists also who are still fighting out. Uh, for women freedom. So if I'm going to choose an extremist country, I can't even imagine going to uh, uh, Pakistan or Afghanistan and fighting for women, but I can still stay here and voice out for them. But how much is going to be heard? That is the question. So if my research and if my points are going to be uh, of some value to another researcher, maybe at one point of time, it would spread. And this will definitely bring about a change. Uh, next is uh, the transport. The uh, transport is nothing but uh, I'll be clearly visible for you. Uh, what are the kinds of novels that we can choose uh, from the various novelists that are available? Mm, contemporary writers are there, Indian novelists are there, science fiction, American novelists, and British novelists. See, we have a lot of uh, choices that we can make. Mm, contemporary writers are there. Uh, I have uh, under Indian novelists, as I told you, it can be Anita Desai or uh, R.K. Narayan or any other time is that, um, are we going to make use of the same uh, information that is available? What is the uniqueness? What am I going to do? So that is new. That is the search again, the search new concept. Okay, now the next is science fiction, American novelists or British novelists. Um, any novelist that I am, uh, uh, I have a liking towards, any novelist that I really like uh, talking about, uh, can be used. Next is the itiner. Really audible? Ma'am, you're audible, audible, but your voice is breaking. Okay. Uh, Vidyama, is it breaking now, ma'am? If I continue to talk now, is it breaking? Ma'am, am I clear? Are you able to hear me? Yes, madam. 
Thank you, sir. Yes, I'll continue. Um, next is the itinerary. Itinerary is nothing but the list of items that we always uh, love to carry when we travel. Uh, we have a list of items. See, when we were kids and when we used to go on school trips, um, moms used to give us, see, these are the list of items that I have packed in your bag. You shouldn't miss out on any of these. You should be very careful with all of these. There are certain things that they keep it, right? So all these are kept uh, properly packed in the bags and it is given to us. So when we start a research, what are the things that we should be careful about? There are a list of items that we can't avoid at all. Those are the items that I would like to share here. Yeah. See, this is how I uh, prefer calling it as planning the method of research. Now that we've decided to go on a trip, it's a four-year journey or a five-year journey or a two-year journey. We know that research is a long process. It is definitely an exhaustive process, but still it is not very difficult if all this is done properly. Now, what are the things that are necessary? Primary sources? Yes, of course, we need primary sources. What are primary sources? What do you mean by these primary sources? It is nothing but uh, the main text or the number of texts that we are going to use for our research. It can be about three novels or five novels, or let's say the list of poems that have been written by one particular poet. If you're going to choose uh, uh, any particular poet, uh, be it Shakespeare, Wordsworth, or Milton, or if you're going to choose one long poem for that Shibal book is needed, or the number of books is needed. Thesis statement. Um, I've had uh, people uh, who have always wondered what is a thesis statement. Uh, some have, would have completed the whole thesis. Some of us would have gone through this uh, situation also. We would have completed the whole thesis. We would have completed the whole uh, uh, research paper itself. And then we would be pondering over what, what am I going to say? See, I have so many ideas here. Uh, what am I trying to talk about in this? See, that is because we give too much of importance to all the points that are around in that paper. You must be able to identify that one point that is going to talk about or that is going to stand along with you to defend the whole thesis itself. That is called as a thesis statement. What is it going to be? If I'm going to talk about womanism, Okay, or if I'm going to talk about feminism, then I should know at what point in that thesis I'm going to weigh importance. Where am I going to show about uh, that, that particular uh, uh, character or let's say that group of characters that need importance there? So the main idea that can be expressed there, it can be argued also that becomes a research problem when it becomes a research question. People can actually uh, ask. Uh, I remember before I even uh, looked into the area of research, uh, for me, MPhil, I thought, okay, fine, my education is done, it is all over. How uh, Dr. Rama, uh, HOD ma'am was saying, it is so true. Uh, every college or every institution has started giving importance to research. Uh, at one point of time, I could not say no, because I knew that even I will have to do research, whether it is on compulsion or whether it is out of passion or out of love or uh, whatever you feel towards literature or towards research. We are at a point of time that you will have to completely uh, agree that uh, we are ready to do research. Uh, some of us land in uh, land into PhD uh, by choice. Some of us land by mistake. But please remember, it is all a wonderful thing. Uh, by the time you complete your uh, research and you look back, you understand that it has always been a wonderful journey that you went through. Uh, there might be hurdles. Every journey has hurdles, right? But it's all right. It's all right to fall short. It is okay. But all that is going to be collected and it is only shaping you every day. It is only making you better. It is only helping you express better. You learn by your mistakes. It is all right to make mistakes, but please don't commit the same mistake again. That is what I have learned from my research. Uh, this theoretical framework. Uh, there is a call for the text. We say, uh, I received a call. Uh, it is a calling from God. Uh, these kind of uh, phrases are used, right? This is, uh, I would say, the call of the text to choose a theory. This, I would love to uh, explain it in two ways. Uh, choosing a theory and then choosing the text or choose the text and the characters and then go for the theory. 
I will explain it to you. Please don't be confused. Uh, see, if you have a liking towards a particular theory, let's say about uh, yeah, Carl Jung, introversion and extroversion theory. Yeah. Uh, now, if I have a liking towards that theory, uh, and I want to really explore that with just one theory alone, I will not be able to write a thesis. So I'll have to go about finding out certain theories or maybe certain novels that will support these kind of theories. Okay. Now, uh, if it is the other way, if I have chosen a few novels, then I like certain characters. Okay, if I have chosen about four or five novels and I have all the woman characters there and each one is of a kind or I can always choose certain theories that can actually explain these kind of characters. That way is also possible. So you don't have to be worried. I, uh, I have a friend who uh, asked me, is it okay to even write without a theory? It is. Yes, it is okay to write without a theory also. A thesis can be written without a theory. But I would always suggest writing with a the theory because um, whenever we want to explain something better, I think theory helps you a lot. There will be at one point of time that you get stuck. It has happened uh, in most of the cases. It has never been like, uh, I'm, I was able to write from the beginning. I just started writing and I just finished it. You know, in just one month I finished, I threw my thesis. No, nobody can say like that. A thesis is like building a house. A thesis is like uh, the delivery of a child. Everybody has an individual story. How much I struggled to build the house, how much I struggled with my, uh, uh, you know, during my delivery is, it is everybody's individual story. So my thesis is my pride. My thesis is my story. So I have pride in calling it. So this theory is going to help you build it better. So I think a theory should be chosen, any kind of a theory for that matter. Uh, it depends on the kind of literature that you are following um, or the kind of uh, character that you have chosen that will help you choose the theory better. Synopsis, chapterization, and bibliography. Again, I would also explain that to you in the following uh, slides. Yeah. This is about research paper. What is a research paper? See, we would uh, all have come into publishing a lot of papers. Initially, I still remember when I began my career as an assistant professor in 2007, uh, you know, going for a paper presentation, uh, it was a huge award for me. My first paper presentation was, uh, I think, uh, when I was doing my college. Um, one of my teachers came and told me, uh, Srividya, you're definitely going to uh, come and present. I, I didn't even know what a paper presentation meant. Uh, she said, you need to write down. I'll give you a topic you need to write. Go to the library, take some points, write, and you're going to come and present it. Present it? I didn't know how to do it. So every one of us would have gone through this. Students who are listening, some of us who are already there, uh, as, who have done a lot of paper presentations, we know. Every paper presentation that we make, it is definitely difficult for us to finish it and come out. For us, if you are, uh, let me say, uh, if it is a very, very comfortable uh, area of uh, speech, then I think it becomes easy. If you have researched it totally new, then I know how much uh, shivering it will cause. Sometimes um, you would want to sit and, uh, you know, rehearse it many times, all that happens. That research paper, when you publish or when you are trying to um, speak about that, when you're going to present it, what are the things that you need to keep in mind? See, application of the methods, ideas, and theories. Theory is just as I told you in the previous slide. How are we going to apply all these to our characters? Uh, please remember, this is one idea that I would always want to mention. One idea, one paper. I have given it as a fifth uh, a point. One idea, one paper. Um, one simple thing that we have to keep in mind is uh, novelty is not just the requirement, but utility. Why have I given that words word there? See, we, uh, we know the saying, pen is mightier than the sword. Yeah. Uh, it can cause a lot of harm. A sword can also cause a lot of harm. We can write. It can hurt a, a few people. It can be a great uh, encouragement to a few people. But what are we learning from some uh, writings? We learn something new. How are we going to make use of it? It is different. See, not just novelty. What, what do I mean by saying not just novelty, but utility too? See, if I write a paper, how much of it is going to be used by somebody else? Why am I getting it published under Scopus? Why am I getting it published under UGC Care List? 
why do you think all this has been distinguished separately ugc list ugc care list ugc um, care list 1 2 and then the scopus and uh, webrise and standardize our research this is help us understand why research is very very important now it is not necessary that i use flowery words alone novelty meaning uh, completely new words if i am going to be very flamboyant if i am going to be totally new with using uh, flowery words and new 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 words you know uh, it is not that important well, to a few people then i think i've made it that is what i meant by not being just novelty but utility too a sword you can polish it you can oil it you can keep it nice and shining you can hang it on the wall but do you think that will be of use not that it has to be used to kill a person but it can be used to defend yourself also use words use simple language with which you can defend your thesis with, with which you can defend your research paper your theory your uh, concept that is what is important okay no idea or more ideas this is where we stand sometimes at one point of time i remember when i was doing my research i went completely blank i was completely lost i had to go back again to see if i have lost something sometimes it happens It, not everybody is bringing all of us don't have share the same amount of knowledge right so no idea or more ideas whichever way we should be thankful because if you have no ideas you're going to search for new ones if you have too many ideas please jot it down jot it down in paper sometimes it happens that uh, after having read uh, for uh, many long hours uh, during the night it comes back to our mind during the night mm, when you dream sometimes you know in the middle of the night all of a sudden you when you get up to drink some water or something uh, this point would come to your mind and you would want to write it down people would say oh come on she's doing phd and that's why she's putting all the show off and all you know no it's not like that you don't have to be worried about the others it is all right it is okay to be so because it is our thesis we know how much of importance we get to it okay now when we write a research paper do not leave the readers perplexed do not leave them confused they should not go and find out an answer for us they should not go to an extent of saying oh my god she has given me a you know a conclusion like this now should i go by this or should i go by this we should be able to give them at least a suggestion do not leave with a question mark and one idea one paper one idea in 10 I mean 10 ideas in one paper is not recommended because always we need to allow criticism what is criticism we all know if i write something if i am going to speak something there will be people who like it there will be people who don't like it also it is all right i cannot be uh, comforting or i i will not be able to appreciate allow people to appreciate me all the time i don't have to be worried about that it is all right if i am able to share some information to some people and if i am able to do that it is enough so that is a reality check it clears at least doubts of some people and it also gives way for new ideas so criticism is actually helpful sometimes you know when we present papers there are some people who would come to us and they would say see i think this would also be a better idea i had done this you know it it really helped me so we'll be able to find out some important points that people share with us so we should allow criticism okay the next is boarding now that we are all set the whole itinerary is ready all the research papers have also been published uh, so you've done a lot of paper presentations the groundwork is done the pilot study is done now that you've chosen one particular field what is uh, the most important you're getting into the journey now that your registration is over your ticket is ready you've boarded the transport also now this is what is very very important you need to have explored your complete primary source okay it is not enough that we read the summary alone some of them have asked some of my students have asked me ma'am is it okay to read the summary alone and write a research paper see it it is not enough it is definitely not enough because we wouldn't understand what the writer has told us he is trying to communicate to us in his language and it is up to us to understand what amount of importance we should lay on each character so you must have gone through the whole primary source for us to understand what amount of importance can be given and why would i call it as tradition and individual talent because it is um, uh, it would be about the past hmm. i would say khalid husaini and babsi sidwa when they had written some of the novels uh, they wanted to actually give a glimpse of the past plus the glimpse of the present also so 
it is the tradition to write pieces or to do research in a particular manner but it is my individual talent to hold it very simple also doesn't mean you have to write only in simple terms if you are comfortable in writing it in a very simple language people will agree even that because it is not necessary that you speak like a british you don't have to speak like an american you don't have to speak like a britisher it is all right to speak like an indian itself it is not that people don't understand you don't have to be completely uh, you know using slang or anything like that it is enough that you are understood your writing is understood and you are appreciated that is the individual talent tradition is to follow the research my individual talent is to understand the text as much as needed and i am going to hold it as my pride the thesis is going to be my achievement now the literature review or uh, usually the literature review falls after the introduction uh, how many of them have done the research how many of them have actually completed it how many of them have done a, a you know a, a paper presentation or something like that uh, how many of them have written about the same idea all these need to be recorded um, uh, i think this has come into uh, practice uh, of late only when i did my research it was not uh, of importance it was just going to be in practice so i had not done it but this will be of real use because we get a track of all the people who have done it and we keep track of all the new ones that is getting recorded also so literature review uh, it will help us to maintain a complete record of how it is uh, researched what is your research about see there are various uh, areas that you can research on just like how i asked you to choose your theory i think you can choose on uh, feminism eco feminism eco criticism or it can be based on any psychological theory just like what sir was talking yesterday positive psychology a wonderful uh, topic on hope um, there is so much that is there around us we fail to identify what is running around us and we keep searching through the others uh, are you able to find something will you be able to help me no not necessary you will be able to identify are you able to relate it to yourself you don't have to reveal this has happened to me but then you can bring it out in your writing itself now how are you going to contextualize that particular problem see every one of us have a problem solving ability it will be different from one person to another it is definitely going to be different right i might handle it in a very complicated manner and you might be one person who will be able to just handle it in a jiffy you might be a very cool headed uh, person so how am i going to approach that problem and how has the has been this problem approached by so many of the others problems and solutions this has always been in the journey of a researcher chat is open chat yeah why have i given this uh, picture i i think you are able to see uh, two pictures that are stuck on the right hand side uh, would you rather be the potato egg or the coffee bean the next one also you find two people sitting in a bus um this is just to give you a motivation i'm sure all of us know about the story of the coffee bean the egg and the potato mm, you can relate it to your lives the way you want it is quite easy to relate uh, some uh, see uh, i would like to call it like this mm, a small child who went and asked her father uh, there are so many problems in my life i'm not able to do anything whatever i achieve i don't think it's enough for my life i've had enough problems in my life what am i going to do it's pressing me down and i don't find any motivation in living what am i going to do next the father who was a chef he only took his child to the kitchen and he had real life examples or i would say not real life i would i'm sorry uh, literal examples right in front uh, of the child he only showed these three pictures or these three uh, items the egg coffee beans and some potatoes when you boil the egg the hard shell remains hard but then inside it becomes soft and mushy similarly the potato that is hard when it's raw when it's boiled it turns very soft and it becomes very tasty in whatever shape you cut it in whatever form you cook it how much ever you give it to kids they love to eat it in different flavors in different uh, ways it is always a delicacy right and with the egg also the way you cook it it is going to be delicious but what about the coffee bean it gets crushed it gets roasted it gets ground 
all that you do and you boil it again you do all that you can you torture the coffee bean as much as you want and finally what does it give you it is a beautiful aroma right when you have a splitting headache when your mom prepares a lovely coffee and she just takes it through you won't you go behind her that is actually life remember that is the thesis you get crushed you get uh, roasted it is all right but what are you trying to do to yourself you are only shaping yourself in the sense you are shaping your thesis this experience is only going to shape yourself so finally our thesis is going to be like that rich flavorful aroma of the coffee yeah now the next uh, picture that i have shown is uh, this is the ideology that i would want uh, all of us to follow and I, i know it is very easy to speak it is very difficult to follow i have also had difficulties but still uh, here and there let's have motivation let's get motivated one or one way or the other they are traveling in the same bus it is not the same view that we get on both the sides of the buses right one person sits on the one side and the other person sits on the other side uh, one person is very happily taking pictures from the brighter side of the bus the other side is so gloomy so dull and he is not able to enjoy the view at all because it looks like the mountainous area that is closed and he he isn't able to find anything at all but he doesn't have to be gloomy he could have easily moved on to the other side of the seat or he could have moved on to the other side of the bus itself he doesn't choose to do so he is stuck with the problem itself try to move out of your problem or try to find a solution for your problem not that the other person has too many sceneries or too much of enjoyment on the other side he is also sitting alone and this man is also sitting alone we are fighting with ourselves we are fighting with our problems it is all right to fight remember all this is going to end one day and you are going to come out as a very successful person with your thesis the next is travel writing in the process of your research we would would have written certain points sometimes you know we keep writing some of us are used to writing it in paper keep it later get it typed some of us might have done it right, typing it directly into the system okay fine i have google docs with me i have google uh, uh, or uh, microsoft word it is easy for me to keep recording in that it is all right i just keep voice typing when i travel if i have certain points if i am not able to type all that is possible the new technology has only given us more and more uh, convenient methods of finishing our research okay this is where we sometimes get stuck these days i think it has become really challengeable with ugc care list scopus writing the chapters all these have become totally uh, you know it is held is very tight towards a thesis uh, i have done research and all uh, see i did all this i went even for a field work my questionnaire is ready um, i I've, i've even uh, every year you know i have given some ugc care list journals and all but then you know when it comes to writing the chapters i don't know if i can put all these together and finish off my thesis no please don't do that that is not your research use all those start writing what have you got to start see it is an extended essay why would i call it as an extended essay i have a story behind uh, i told you i will tell you about the abstract and synopsis i have something for you there uh, writing scholarly papers Uh, these scholarly papers get listed on the ugc care scopus index and uh, other ugc web of science journals also why is it called as ugc care list journal see they have globally recognized standards that is more convenient see when some of the journals are not up to the mark of the standards uh, that are recognized by universities abroad we fall short okay it is okay to fall short within uh, our limits it is okay to fall within your uh, inside your house but when it happens to us on the road we feel ashamed so that should not happen to us right so that is why we have ugc care list journals okay so we have certain standards that we have to meet so when they say you have to write an essay for about 6000 words uh, we say oh my god 6000 words how do i write it is not easy i would say you will not be able to write it in just one day or two days you would have researched you would have done a certain amount of research for the past few uh, months or maybe in the past uh, past few weeks with all those points that you have noted you can start writing it is okay if you don't reach the deadline maybe in another journal maybe in another month you will be able to do it but remember when you give a a full fledged writing like that it is definitely going to be of use it will definitely be of use because you will be proud of your achievement you look at your paper that is getting published in the scopus or the web of science or the ugc careless you can proudly call it yes i have done it 
you don't have to be worried at all because it is not plagiarized you can be 100% sure that all these kind of journals do not agree with any sort of plagiarism now why is it called plagiarism see uh, i told you research itself is a sort of plagiarism yes i have done some research and if you are trying to uh, do something out of mine again i can call it plagiarism but what are you going to do you are going to quote my work so it cannot be called called as plagiarism at all why i would say that is see uh, we are only researching it we are only searching again and in that process i'm trying to find out something new something unique and something very beautiful you are trying to change the whole process itself i would have done it in one way and you are trying to do it in another way so when you do that you are quoting that you've been inspired from this or maybe you you have just acquired an idea from this particular journal or this particular research paper alone and then it goes on yeah yeah this bibliography also i have some uh, examples for you next is the chapterization uh, this is just an example uh, i just uh, thought i'll i'll write a few uh, lines for these alone the introduction um it actually differs i will not be able to give you what exactly falls into an introduction what exactly falls into chapter 2 3 4 or 5 uh, but i would say introduction analysis findings and summation would always be there mm, what have you analyzed what have you found uh, all that is necessary for your research to be defended right you need to defend your thesis so you need to have written all that your summation also uh, but um, see in introduction Uh, whatever writer you have chosen or let's say whatever uh, whoever you have chosen the number of writers that you have chosen you must have done a detailed study of their background their culture their education uh, if writing is only their hobby or it is their profession or do they follow any other profession seriously do they belong to any uh, board of studies or anything like that Mm, besides that i think you must be able to talk about why they've written uh, this particular book or novel or poetry or that collection of poetry all this would help you give a strong introduction you're not going to narrate the story anywhere in the thesis please remember you're not going to narrate the story of whatever you've read reading the whole primary source doesn't mean that you're going to sit and narrate the whole story that is not what we need what are you trying to find from all the three or four novels or the seven novels that you've chosen what have you identified why have you identified how did you research the research proposal comes here again okay now i would also suggest this a comparative study or let's say you can identify one particular theory uh, find out at least one more theory so that you can compare these characters according to these theories or you can compare certain characters itself so that will help you identify a better extended version of your essay that is why i said an extended essay it is easy to write about one page essay you ask our students to write uh, write in about 50 words they'll sit and count sometimes ma'am 50 words is enough no some of them are very good they would uh, they wouldn't mind writing even more um, i think it is almost time for us to teach our uh, students how to write elaborately also that is also very very important because uh, the art of writing elaborately is a great hitch when we come to writing a research paper come on uh, for some you know it is like i can write as much as i want the only problem is you know to get it cut to cut it short is only my problem you don't know how how much i suffered in cutting it short uh, only some are uh, actually uh, bliss uh, you know uh, they have been blessed with such a um, possibility uh, the next is abstract and synopsis now what is an abstract what is a synopsis what is this chapterization why all this is getting into research oh my god to write one research paper itself i have to rake my brains oh, how am i going to do all this see there is nothing that you have to be worried please remember once you've done the framework once you've got all the framework ready it is almost done yes now you have your uh, thesis your chapters ready after which i would recommend you to write the abstract and the synopsis because abstract is a shorter version of the synopsis and the synopsis is a shorter version of thesis now if you go to the university or to the college that you have to submit your thesis if you go there and say i am going to submit my synopsis the immediate question will be where is your rough thesis so immediately they would want you to show the rough thesis also so which means you must have got your thesis ready doesn't mean you can just download as many pages you want and you can just bind it just go give it no remember anybody can question us 
So there should be sense in that. All those years of research, the three years or four years or two years that you put in, your hard work is going to be recorded there. It is all right to be wrong. It is all right to have mistakes there. It's okay. You can always defend that. That is your synopsis, a shorter version. You're trying to focus on the most important relevant points of the thesis in your synopsis. Now, what is your abstract? It is actually a summary of the thesis plus a smaller version of the synopsis only. You don't have to be exactly wording all that is there in the thesis in your abstract. It is okay. Now, see, I would like to tell you this. that this uh, I'm sure you must have, uh, most of you would have read ABC of Reading Ezra Pounds. Now there, um, I'm not sure of the page number uh, 17, somewhere in the initial itself. Uh, there is a story where uh, a student is asked to uh, look at a fish. Uh, the student is asked to describe the fish. The student just says it's a sunfish. What else? It is a fun sunfish. It's, it, look, it, it looks beautiful. That's all. Now the uh, master says, why don't you go and uh, write something about it? The child says, what? I have to write something, is it? What am I going to write? Uh, he says, yes, you have to go write something about that and come back. Now the child begins to write. And uh, he, he says, he talks about its family. He identifies the biological name of the family. He takes uh, a few information about its family and he writes about half a page essay and he brings it. He says, the teacher looks at it and he says, go write something more. Go back and write about four page essay. Okay. Now with that, um, he the child is able to write about a four page essay, uh, the life cycle of the fish. Okay. How it looks when it gets, uh, it is almost in the stage of decomposition. Uh, it is going to be decomposed. So it is uh, getting decayed. So all those sort of information, how it uh, uh, swims across the water, how beautiful it looks. So much of information, it, he goes and he begins to research and he's able to write. Now from that one word, it's a sunfish to a four page essay. How do you think the child was able to write? If a child is able to do so, then why not we? it is possible for us to write an extended essay also. It is that simple that we write. If we are able to write about 6,000 words research paper, imagine it is not going to be difficult for us to write a thesis also. Yes, this is what I told you. It is a shorter version of the synopsis. And a synopsis is almost the important points of your thesis is being recorded there. I think I'm taking much of your time. Uh, I'll try to finish in another two minutes. Uh, this is a bibliography. Um, I have uh, just given a few examples. So these are the things uh, I think you're able to see. The, these are the things that are most in need when you start writing your bibliography. Uh, the title of the article or the periodical or the whichever journal or book or whatever you're reading. Then the volume number, issue number, date of publication. See, this is how it used to be according to the seventh edition of the MLA handbook. Now it is not so. Okay, it has changed. Now this is only for your understanding that I have given. These are the things that we need to have recorded. And this is how they have actually given. If it is the web-based uh, information, then this is how HTTP is. Now even this is not required. Yeah. Okay, now this is the, like, you can identify the differences uh, the eighth edition and the seventh edition. Kindly look at the bold version alone. You will be able to identify the differences. The old version is given below. I hope you're able to understand. Jacobs, Kama, Allen, The Pleasures of Reading in an Age of Distraction. Okay, Oxford. See, in the seventh edition, you have find a colon, but there, not much is necessary here. It is just 2011. And here in the seventh edition, we had to mention whether it is print or web or what kind of a journal, when you researched it, uh, if it is a web, the date of research, all that was necessary. And they have only reduced the problems here. Yeah, this is citing uh, an article from a scholarly journal. When you uh, take a journal, when you take a particular article from a journal, this is how you used to do it in your seventh edition, the, the one below. Can you see the boldened one uh, below, the second one? Kincaid, Jamaica in history, Kalalu 24.2. It is volume number 
and number two issue number two that is spring 2001 this was how it used to be written parenthesis using the colon using the proper commas using the proper full stop so it used to be a great thing to finish off the bibliography it used to be a nightmare i remember sitting for two three months when i did my uh, bibliography mm. in the sixth edition it was even worse we had to write according to uh, the uh, extracts that we've taken from the web books that we've referred uh you know journals that we've referred videos that we've referred so everything had to be categorized now it is not so you can just go according to the alphabetical order and it is even shortened now it is easier now because it's easy that you can just distinguish them with a comma here see according to the eighth edition you just need to use a comma and it is over and it is very clear there is no confusion at all why is it given under parenthesis why should it be a colon why not a semicolon nothing like that it is quite easy now so our, our job is actually easy. Eighth edition has only given us an easier touch. Okay, now coming to the further scope of research. Uh, now that even your bibliography is ready, your chapter writing, all that is done, every chapter is distinguished uh, and given equal importance, right? You find a problem in one particular chapter, you try to uh, explain that in that chapter. After that, you're trying to focus on a solution in the next chapter. After which you're trying to analyze with the theories, what have you understood, what are your findings, and finally you give your summation. All that is done in each of the chapters, you give weightage according to what your guide would say. You have your discretion, you have your uh, uh, thoughts put in, and your guide also helps you a lot. After all that, there is something called as a further scope of research. You know, when you present your viva, this point of time is going to give you utmost happiness. Finally, I've come to the further scope of research. Oh, wow, my viva is over, my research is over, my thesis is done. I'm done for the whole life. This is what you actually feel. But remember, it is not so. You're going to be doubly happy if you realize your research has just begun. Okay? Every research is only a new beginning. If you have researched completely, and if you are able to identify one particular area that needs more research, that is where you excel. See, I'll tell you your next destination. Would you stop with just going to Kodaikanal alone? Would you stop and having uh, visited Delhi or uh, uh, whatever place, Kashmir or uh, whatever beautiful place that you would want to visit, Himachal Pradesh, any place that you want? Would you say, I would love to go to this temple only once? Would we do that? That is a kind of uh, a feeling that you should have towards your research. If you've done enough with that research, maybe for about a year or so, you would say, no, no, I'm done for life. One PhD itself, I'm done. Oh, it is enough for me. No, it is not so. The next year you would realize, I would want to give a new area of research. At least if you're going to be a mentor or if you're going to be a guide, you would want to do certain things that you haven't been able to do it. So you would guide your, uh, your student better. So this is the next destination. So these are areas that have not been much uh, used. South Asian literature, Latin American literature, Scandinavian literature. So these are possibilities. If you would want to research on these, probably you can do Latin American literature is also different these days. Why I said from every ending comes a new beginning. Every research comes uh, with a new beginning itself. You cannot stop by saying, I've done my research. Yes, I'm done for life. No, that is where we actually begin. That is where we actually start. It is, uh, you know, a stepping stone. Uh, you would have fallen short. You would have made mistakes. I would always, uh, you know, suggest to my students, it is okay to make mistakes. Feel free to make mistakes. It is all right. And uh, about plagiarism, I wanted to tell uh, everyone just this one point alone. Uh, with plagiarism, uh, do not be afraid of uh, plagiarism. Uh, I found some uh, research scholars um, totally panicking about, oh my God, plagiarism. I don't know if I've done it right. How much percentage is it going to be? I, I really wish it is in the single digit. I really wish it is within the limits. Do not be afraid if you have written it by yourself. Remember, there will be mistakes if it is your original piece of writing. If it is your original piece of writing, we would have made mistakes. See, to err is human. It is all right. It is okay to have made mistakes. Grammatically, we are not Britishers. We are not Americans. We don't use English the way they use. It is okay. And if we are able to do research better than them, I think we should all clap for ourselves. I think we should be able to 
uh, appreciate ourselves by saying, see, come on, I'm doing in your literature, man. What is wrong with you? It is all right. If, even if I have made mistakes, it is okay. So plagiarism is something that you should not be much worried about as long as you know that it is your original piece of writing. Okay. And remember to quote everything properly. Quote, uh, you must be able to use uh, MLA Handbook 8th edition or the kind of version that your university recommends side by side. As and when you keep using one particular uh, note or uh, uh, any notes for that matter, if you're researching through a website or if you're uh, reading through a book, please make sure that you write it or at least note it down in a Google Doc um, so that it becomes handy for you to use it towards the end of the research. It will be really, really helpful. We should never, never postpone it thinking, it's okay, I think I'm tired today, I'll do it tomorrow. Don't do that. That is where we make the grievous mistake. Do not do that. Okay. So with this, uh, I would like to uh, place my gratitude. Uh, I'm deeply humbled by this opportunity. Uh, thank you to the whole team of SRM IST, the whole management of SRM. I'm, uh, I'm deeply humbled by all the words of uh, appreciation that you've given me in the beginning itself. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you uh, so much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Sridevi, Dr. Sumati. Uh, uh, thank you, HOD, ma'am, Dr. Rema, uh, for this wonderful opportunity. I, I would really have made my day if I have at least uh, inspired or at least given motivation to one person out there. Uh, I would be deeply humbled and I, I would feel really happy. Thank you. I think I have done uh, at least a small justice of what I really wanted to press in today. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. From every ending comes a new beginning, as you quoted today in your PPT. Uh, I think many research scholars would have got uh, inspired by the session today. And definitely they would pursue uh, their research uh, according to the uh, advices that you gave today. And it was really a trip, embarking on a trip. It is really a trip. Uh, that you took us uh, in a bus and then I uh, interpreted uh, what uh, research is and what life is. is. And uh, thank you for uh, such a very positive uh, motivation that you gave us today, ma'am. And uh, um, now participants uh, are requested to post their queries and uh, um, get, get it clarified from our resource person. You can even post the queries in the chat box or you can uh, unmute yourself and ask it. So there is a question from uh, Mega, and uh, she she has uh, asked a question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Ma'am, is it uh, is this the question? Is it not necessary to work for an institution and only contribute to research under a mentor? Yes, my yes, yes, the same. yes. Okay, or does independent research take place too? Uh, I think this independent research, I don't think that is uh, uh, much encouraged in our uh, society. I would, to be frank, um, I've heard of independent researchers only abroad in countries like US and Canada where they offer scholarships to uh, students, uh, or I am not very sure about independent researchers in uh, IITs or probably uh, such places alone, uh, I think. But according to uh, the information that I have, uh, it is necessary to undertake research under a mentor. That would be better. I'm, I'm talking about the PhD research, not the research paper. That is an individual research. If you're going to publish a paper, uh, for about 6,000 words. And if you're going to publish it under uh, UGC research, I mean, I'm sorry, UGC care list, uh, it is your own research, right? Yeah, you can do that. 
Ma'am, there's another question. Can I read it for you? Yes, ma'am, please. So, Mr. Abdullah Shah wants to know what is the difference between synopsis and research problem? Yeah, okay. A synopsis, uh, so it is very simple. A synopsis is uh, you give a summary. If I'm going to ask you, uh, what is your uh, thesis about? Mm, how have you divided your uh, thesis? Uh, you would say these are my chapters and this is what I'm trying to talk about in each of these chapters. That is your synopsis. Okay, so that is a summary. So synopsis will also contain all the chapters plus a small short summary in the beginning to state why you're doing that research. So that would be your synopsis. Okay, a research problem is the area that you're trying to identify throughout the whole thesis itself. If I have an issue for women alone or for men alone, see, for example, um, according to that novel, Khalil Husseini's novel, The Kite Runner, there is... Uh, so much of injustice to men also. Uh, that is one novel that I couldn't sleep after reading it. Mm. There is injustice to men also. So if I want to concentrate on that particular novel, I don't have to be going around what is uh, spoken much about today. So my research problem would be that particular area. So if I'm concentrating on that particular research problem, and if I'm going to talk about that throughout the thesis, and if I'm finding out a theory, you will be able to identify a theory that relates to your problem. Okay, if I have a character that needs more attention, that becomes the research problem. Why is the character important? Why is she becoming more important? Why am I giving importance to the people around her? That is the research problem. Synopsis is a complete, it's a total presentation. Uh, let's say in about three pages or something, you will be presenting a synopsis. That is your synopsis. The whole thesis in three pages. Remember, your thesis is going to be about 200 uh, pages or something, less than 200 pages or something. And your synopsis is only about three pages. So how much shortened can it be? That is your synopsis. And can I go to the next question? Yes, ma'am, please. Uh, ma'am, this is by Dr. Ganesh Sin, sir. Okay. So who inspired you to do analogy in your talk? And where did you learn this methodology of taking comparisons from day-to-day -day life, that to traveling, boarding, journey, destination, etc. And he has appreciated you, ma'am. Like, it's really great and wonderful. And uh, this was his uh, query. Uh, sir, I don't know if I have to thank you for this question. Um, no, I, I think you're making me a little emotional. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much for appreciating. It means a lot. Uh, I have always uh, tried to relate with uh, real-life examples. Uh, I would say... Uh, you know, uh, my students, when I teach uh, to my students, I always try to relate it with movies because these students, you know, it is easy to relate uh, incidents to them. It is easy to get them understand uh, with the movie movies. Not that I keep watching all the movies that get released. I also have choices. So this was actually uh, a combined effort, I would say. Um, I was pondering over what topic to choose and what should I speak to people. Uh, that is when I thought I didn't want to do on literature immediately. Uh, I know I need to put in a lot of brains for that. I don't, I, I'm, I'm not very sure if I'm that brainy to talk about uh, literature in deep. So I need to do a little more research on literature uh, to give a proper talk. So this would be my personal experience. Uh, this is what I really felt. I underwent a lot of struggles. There was a point at one, uh, at one stage in during my research, uh, I thought it's over, it's finished, I'm done for my life, I'm not going to continue at all, my PhD is doomed, that is it. But then, you know, my guide, uh, he gave me all the confidence, my family stood with me, they said, no, you've almost crossed the tunnel, you see the light there and why are you going back? No, that this is not going to happen. So I thought, there are so many people who are still feeling low. So this is really going to help them at least about 1%, I would be happy. So this is why I wanted to actually uh, do this. Um, I don't know if it was right in having uh, uh, come as the last speaker because uh, all of them, all the four speakers, great stalwarts, all of them spoke on uh, great theories and lovely uh, uh, points. Uh, I think you would have chosen at least one theory or some uh, elements from theirs. Uh, you should be able to take at least something from mine and complete the research. If you are already in the process of research, 
I think uh, this should motivate you to complete, complete it off and come out successfully. Thank you, sir. Ma'am, can I go to the next question? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So, like, there are many fake journals. So, how do we find Scopus Index journals? So, this is one question. Um, yeah, this is a question that remains unanswered. Uh, see, even if I would want to publish my paper, my research paper, I would also keep wandering over the internet. Um, I think it is better to go uh, to proper uh, mode of search or uh, let's say you have contacts, you have your contacts who would be able to suggest that this is still under the Scopus listed journals. This is still under the UGC care listed journals. Uh, I remember some of the journals that we publish, or most of us would have gone through this. We would have published it. The next month, the journal wouldn't be there in the UGC care list at all. So this has happened. Luckily, uh, mine has been published. So this is what we say. So I think we need to follow the internet closely. We need to follow the instructions of the government wherein the UGC site itself provides. Uh, that would be better. Our self-search is better rather than finding out from people or from certain uh, group of people alone don't we don't have to stick to this particular uh, information alone i think the ugc website itself provides enough information regarding that i think that is the most trusted one thank you ma'am so like can you go to the next question ma'am uh, saumita sarkar ma'am has asked this question what should be the ideal word limit for a research paper uh, um, ideal word limit, I would say not less than 4,000 to 5,000 words between 4,000 and 5,000 because that's where you stand justified. Um, initial, see, I don't know how to justify that to you. Uh, it depends on the area of research that you have chosen. Uh, again, coming back to uh, my own example, if I'm going to write about uh, Khalid Hosseini and Babsi Sadwa, or let's say any one writer for that matter, if I'm going to choose one particular writer, I would have a background uh, studied for that particular writer. Uh, based on that background, this person would have written this particular uh, novel or something, or that particular incident has happened. I would have researched that. If I'm going to suddenly present, okay, just like how a movie begins, all of a sudden, you find a man running on the road and he's getting killed. You don't even know why he's getting killed. That should not be the way that we express it in our papers, right? Uh, we might think uh, these classic novels that come out, the bestsellers and all, you don't even understand how it is beginning. Oh, fine. I should need uh, actually a summary for this to be understood. No, that's not actually needed. You can very well go into the introduction. You can very well talk about the background. So that forms the first half of it. And then you explain about uh, how it is uh, uh, explained by the author himself. And then you talk about the incident. Find any theory or something. It is all right to even use a theory in your research paper. It is good to use all that because it is all, uh, I would say, a trial uh, version of your thesis. If you're writing a thesis and if you're writing a research paper, these are all your trial and error methods. As long as yours is not plagiarized and as long as yours is getting published, you're safe. Now that you have tried all this, find methods on how to apply it into your thesis. So I would say not less than 4,000 at least 4,000 words would be an ideal uh, research paper word limit. I hope I've answered the, the questions that ma'am has been asking. I don't know if it is satisfactory. This is according to my uh, discretion that I'm answering. Thank you, ma'am. Can I go to the next question, ma'am? Uh, Rajshri Bamal sir has asked, is it necessary to find gap in existing research work for thesis? Uh, Ma'am, could you please repeat that question again? One follow. Is it necessary to yes, find? Is it necessary to find gap in existing research work for thesis? Um, existing research work. I think what she's trying to ask is somebody's research that is being uh, studied again. So am I trying to find another new gap? Is that what uh, you're asking me, Rajri, ma'am? I'm not very sure. If that is so, yes, you have to find, you can't be following another person's footpath. 
uh, if I'm if you are doing a research on a thesis that I have completed, not necessary, but just as an example, uh, if I you're trying to follow uh, somebody's theories and the same kind of uh, novels, the same pattern, you will not be allowed to do on the same thing, right? So you need to find a research gap. What is something unique? That is what you mean by research gap. What is unique? Uh, what is something different that nobody has done? Or let's say, um, see, if I'm trying to uh, talk about Khalid Hosseini and Babsi Sidwa, see, I, I, I find it easy to give it as an example. Uh, no offense, please. I, I give the same thing as an example. Um, these people have used uh, a language that is quite common to Hindi, Sanskrit. So uh, if you're researching on the characters, on womanism or feminism and all that, this can be something new that you would want to do about the language, about the style. So that can be the research gap, something new and unique. Can I go to the next question, ma'am? Abdullah Shah, sir, wants to know what is the difference between hypothesis and research problem? Uh, uh, sir, it is almost the same. Hypothesis. Um, see, I would ma'am, your voice is breaking. Hypothesis. This is like asking. Ma'am, am I clear? Can you hear me? Yeah, ma'am. Yeah, now it is clear. Is it breaking now? Okay, I'm sorry. No, ma'am. Now it's not uh, it, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is like asking what is the difference between the synopsis and uh, the whole thesis. Uh, see, a hypothesis and a research problem. A hypothesis, uh, it is almost equal to a research statement or let's say a thesis statement. Uh, I cannot give a complete solution to a problem that is there, I am trying to identify a suggestion. Okay, that is my hypothesis. And the research problem is nothing but what is a problem that I find in that thesis alone? What is a problem that I have identified? See, if women are not given any identity or if they are not given any justice, if there is no social justice for women, that is the problem. And what is the hypothesis or the statement? Are they able to outwit all these men? Are they able to outwit all these lawmakers? And are they going to be successful? That is a possible solution. So this will be the difference. Ma'am, have I answered? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Can I go to the next question, ma'am? Sure, ma'am. Is it necessary to have a big thesis of 300 pages or it can be short also? What can be the shortest and longest thesis as far as pages are concerned? Minimum and maximum pages of the uh -huh. thesis. Minimum and maximum pages. Oh, for a research paper, probably you can uh, limit 4,000. It can go up to 6,000. But this, uh, I think, uh, 190 to 200 pages is your uh, thesis limit. But I'm not sure if the universities have started demanding for more pages. 300 pages I haven't heard. But probably if you have it that way, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if they would say no to it. Uh, it can't be the shortest, ma'am. It can't be about 150 pages and all. That will not be allowed, I'm sure. Mm, because you need to have done justice, right? So you will definitely have so much to write. Sometimes it goes beyond 220 pages and all. Uh, so I think an ideal limit is about 200 to 220. That is the ideal one. Uh, you can't go below that. Uh, hopefully, 190 to between 190 and 200 is the, is fine. 300, I think, is a little too much because you would have exhausted all the information and your bibliography would uh, run for pages. So it is always good to have a strong bibliography. That's not the matter. But this would be ideal. Somewhere between 190 and 220 would be ideal. Yeah. 
Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. So the next question is. Um, hope we are not exhausting you with the questions. No, 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 not problem, ma'am. I'm happy to answer. Dr. T. Ishwar Rao has uh, posed this question, ma'am. How methodology is different from method? Methodology is different from a method. I think. Uh, as long as my knowledge goes, methodology is something that is defined by somebody. If uh, I find a methodology that has been defined by certain critics or let's say some uh, great people who have already done research, uh, we have great scientists and all, right? Einstein and uh, people like that. If they have done something, this is a process of research. This is a process you need to do. That is a methodology. And uh, with method, I choose the method. Whether I have to choose a field work or if I have to choose only a questionnaire, uh, that's okay. I don't think any there is much difference between that. Uh, under what perspective is he asking? I'm, I'm not able to understand that very clearly. I think uh, I this is what is according to my knowledge, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. So, like, uh, Sakreshwari, uh, Sakreshwari wants to know. And he wants to ask this question. Kindly give us few tips and suggestions to develop our writing skill. Uh, writing skill. I think you need to start writing papers and publish them. The first paper that you publish will look like, um, you know, a child's a play, a child who begins to write. The first, first paper that I published. Now, if I take that and if I uh, go through that, I would be able to identify uh, uh, not much of my thoughts have been organized it, organized in it. Uh, it wasn't written uh, in the way that I would think right now. Uh, I'm not talking about the grammatical errors. Uh, of course, if you are good enough with your uh, gram grammar, there wouldn't be much grammatical errors and all that. But then uh, ideas and thoughts that you need to arrange, organize and write, you need to read a lot. Mm, when you begin your research, you become a good reader, you become a voracious reader. So with that skill, you will be able to write. And for that, I think you can start writing letters, which has already been erased from the whole society itself. Uh, I think we need to stick to uh, using proper spellings. All of us are used to WhatsApp typing and uh, messaging messengers and all that has come uh, in handy. So our writing skills have vanished. And writing would be useful for you, ma'am. Uh, or uh, sometimes writing a small paper, uh, not necessary that you write for 3,000 words and all that. It is okay. Even if it is not UGC Scopus or, I mean, UGC Care List or Scopus, try publishing in reputed journals alone. So with that, you will be able to, when somebody tries to identify certain errors in you, uh, let's agree. L let's say it is all right. Okay, fine, I'll correct it. When And when we correct it, we learn. So when we correct it, we are not going to make that same mistake. So that's how I think uh, we can develop a writing skill. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you for your patience in answering all the questions. Uh, now uh, it's time for vote of thanks. Uh, we have come to the end of the session due to the time limit. Uh, we are just keeping few questions. Uh, and uh, thank you, uh, ma'am. And now we have Dr. B. Shri Devi, ma'am, to propose the vote of thanks. Over to you, ma'am. First and foremost, I would like to thank God the Almighty for his abundant blessings for the smooth conduct of the, of the function. I would like to convey my special gratitude to the management of SRM Institute of Science and Technology for giving us such an opportunity to organize this workshop. I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to Dr. Vijay Alayan, who is the resource person for day one. He has given a complete overview of transnationalism and literature. A special gratitude Dr. Kair, to Dr. K.R. Vijaya, Chief Guest of the Second Day National Level Workshop, who has given us a clear elucidation of African-American women poets in Harlem Renaissance. A special thanks to Dr. Sharon Grace, 
who has given us a holistic view of testing, wash plaque effect, and its impact over students and teachers. A humble gratitude to Dr. Sendil Kumaran, who gave us an elaborate and lucid idea and description over positive psychology, literature, and lessons for life. A heartfelt thanks to Dr. Srividya Ma'am, who has vividly explained the apt and accurate path each and every researcher must take in his or her, her life. The trip that you had taken us would have definitely enriched and enriched and enlightened the research scholars as well as the faculty. Your in-depth knowledge and clarity has widened our knowledge on research, ma'am. Thank you so much. I once again thank all the resource persons who amidst their busy and hectic schedule has accepted our invitation to be amidst us. I would like to place my sincere gratitude to our director, Dean, VP Academics and VP Admin Sirs for their motivation and encouragement. I would like to place my sincere thanks to our beloved and honorable head of the department, Dr. V. Rema, for supporting us in all our endeavors. The program is not successful without you, ma'am. Thank you so much for that. A special and heartfelt thanks to my friend and the organizer, Dr. Sumati, ma'am, for all her help and support. I'm very grateful to each and every faculty member of the Department of English for their effective support and guidance throughout the five-day sessions. Last but not the least, I express my sincere gratitude to all the enthusiastic and budding participants who are with us for all the five days. And there, there were almost more than 200 participants every day. Hope all the participants have been benefited by all the informative sessions. Thank you all. Have a great day. Thank you.